let us write definition of limit as it tends to c f of x is equal to plus infinity having written the definition of limit as x tends to c f of x is equal to l what changes we need to make in the definition of limit if the limit is tending to plus infinity and how will the graph of the curve look like this this is your y axis and suppose there is one point where both these functions are eventually going to infinity something like that okay that x is equal to c as you go near c return side the function goes to plus infinity as you go near c from right hand side function goes to infinity okay so this is the graph and we are supposed to capture the meaning of this graph into the definition of limit so try to create your own definition of limit in this case show it to me then we will write down together complete correct definition what was our definition when this infinity was a finite number l let me just recollect that definition let a be subset of r let f be defined from a to r let c be let l belong to r let c belong to r be the cluster point of a let l belong to r we say that limit f of x as x tends to c is equal to l if and only if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exist delta greater than 0 such that for every x belonging to related delta neighborhood of c intersection a we have f of x minus l to be less than epsilon okay so we had a finite value on y axis where we could specify epsilon limits for that l value and hence we could find out the delta limits for c that is the essence of this particular definition so as far as c is concerned c and delta will continue so let us look at what will continue let a be subset of r will be there let f be defined from a to r will be there let c belonging to r be cluster point of a should be there now let l belong to r need not be there because l we don't have we say that limit f of x x tends to c is equal to instead of we have plus infinity now there will be a problem for this statement also because if we don't have l how do we have epsilon okay so let us start writing the de definition let let me change color
if it is the if now what is the situation here this limit is tending to plus infinity it is going towards positive infinity positive direction of y axis so for every epsilon we don't have but now we have understood infinity and we said that you give me a number i give you a number bigger than that that is what is tending to plus infinity you give me a number i give you a number bigger than that so for every bigger number that you give me for every bigger number that you give me there exists data greater than 0 such that for every x belonging to deleted delta neighborhood of c intersection a we have we have now what we have i give you a number i have given you a number m now you are going to give me a number bigger than m okay so for every x belonging to deleted delta neighborhood of c we have f of x greater than m understand this these are the two changes in this definition you give me a bigger number i give you a number bigger than that value of the function so i will stay near c such near c that the value of the function for that x is going to be greater than m suppose now let us take the example example y is equal to 1 upon x square near zero as you go near zero this value goes to infinity so limit 1 upon x square as x tends to zero is equal to plus infinity okay we will prove this but intuitively we are aware that the graph is like this so as you go near zero you are tending to plus infinity so suppose i tell you that let my m value be 100 okay so if my m value is 100 so this is suppose 100 can you tell me what delta neighborhood i should leave so that i will always get value of f of x that is 1 upon 100 1 uh, upon x square greater than 100 Okay, so in what delta neighborhood I should stay, so that so if m is equal to hundred, and if f of x has to be greater than hundred, and if f of x is equal to one upon x square, and my delta is x minus zero, so that is equal to mod x. So what value? This is my delta. How much? Delt in the how much delta neighborhood I should be as far as zero is concerned, so that the value of the function is always going to be greater than hundred. That is what I have to calculate. Okay, so one upon x square. Uh, basically, how do we go about it? So x square is equal to one. It's sorry. This is the inequality we have. One upon x square is greater than. Hundred implies x square is positive. Therefore, x square is less than one upon hundred. Now, if you take square root of this quantity, positive square root then is less than one by ten. And mod x is your mod x is your delta. Is that right? So, if you remain between 0.1 to minus 0.1 if your x value is between minus 0.1 to plus 0.1 your y value will be going to be greater than 100 what is the mistake on the point 10 this is what is your delta On a point ten is your mod x should be less than on a point ten. That is what is your delta. So you should choose value of x between 
minus 0 0.1 to plus 0 0.1 and it is very obvious if you take say 0 0.05 x is equal to 0 0.05 so x is equal to 0 0.05 therefore y is equal to 1 upon x which is 1 upon 0 0.05 which is equal to 1 upon 0 0.00 1 upon x square. Uh, uh, 1 upon 0 0.05 square. Square. So what is the square of this? I mean, is this value much bigger than 100? Yes. Okay. And therefore, this open interval, because if we have open interval, we will get equality with these interval values. Suppose I take uh, x is equal to 0.1, I will get exact 100, y is equal to 100. So we want inequalities. So therefore, this definition is working. You give me the value of m. What is the value that you want? I, if I stay near delta neighborhood of x, I will definitely get more than that. If that is the situation, then I will never have problem in finding out delta. You give me whatever big value you want. You give me whatever big value you want. Vedanta Namdukar Kutala Ikda. Vedanta Apla Vachmane, na? Okay. Samaz Laika Tumala hai? Are you Samaz Laika? Okay. This is what is the definition. Now, now theoretically, let us write down. I have written this example of 100. So, can we write down a theoretical proof for I mean, the question is prove that Limit x tends to 0 1 upon x square is equal to plus infinity. Okay, this is the proof of this theorem limit x tends to 0, 1 upon x square is equal to plus infinity. Let capital M be given, which is greater than 0, choose delta is equal to 1 upon root M. Delta is positive. So for every x belonging to deleted delta neighborhood of it is C chai which is 0 line by C is our 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Intersection real numbers, we have x minus 0 less than delta. This is the meaning of this statement. x belongs to this. So mod x is less than 1 upon root m, which is root m is less than 1 upon mod x. Squaring both sides, we get m is less than 1 upon x square. And that is precisely what we wanted to prove as per definition. Therefore, if this happens, then limit x tends to 0, 1 upon x square is plus infinity. Now you create definition for minus infinity. I give you a couple of minutes. What we need to do while writing the definition of this is that you keep uh, this statement same. Now the graph of this is going to be typically then the function is going to go like this. 
okay this is your c so as you go near c from left or from right you are going to go towards plus infinity minus infinity so now this number is given to you it is you give me a number i give you a number smaller than that that is what is the meaning of this but then the number that i am going to give you is going to be always positive so let us create a notation by which let capital m greater than 0 be given that is the starting point because we don't want to play with these epsilon delta capital m small m whatever we use in the beginning of these proofs must be positive to avoid the ambiguity and unnecessary interference of minus sign so every time we will have epsilon delta or these big numbers or small numbers to be positive and then we will adjust that minus sign in the definition okay so if m greater than 0 is given to you will you be able to give me value of the function lesser than minus m that is what is the question okay so using m greater than 0 only you write down your definition let a be subset of r let f be defined from a to r let c belong to r be cluster point of a let m greater than 0 whatever we say that limit x tends to c f of x equal to minus infinity if and only if for every m greater than 0 there exists delta greater than 0 such that for every x belonging to deleted delta neighborhood of c intersection a we have f of x less than minus capital okay in this case we will take say that it is minus n okay few more definitions will be required that we will do little later now let us create one more important definition that is Right. Let f be the function from interval i to r. Let c belong to let c belong to i. That interval. We say that f is. differentiate at x is equal to c if and only if this is important we say that f is differentiable at x is equal to c if and only if limit x tends to c f of x minus f of c upon x minus c exists and is finite this is important when it exists it is denoted
by f prime f dash of c write down then we will discuss meaning of f of x minus f of c <coughs> if we have a function like this c is here x is here so f of x will be this f of c will be this so this is the difference f of x minus f of c so this difference divided by this difference that is what is this and x as x tends to c dynamic situation as x comes near and near to c this is what we called earlier limiting case limiting case of a secant is a tangent that is what we said earlier limiting case so this point x is a dynamic point c is a stationary point so you are trying to move x such that it goes near c and it will never become equal to c it will be in the neighborhood of c every time therefore denominator is not becoming zero but it is tending to zero similarly numerator also will be tending to zero therefore this limit essentially is going to be indeterminate zero by zero limit and now even if it is zero by zero limit if it exists and existence for these definitions is not acceptable here we have got it exists limit exists but it is minus infinity or limit exists but it is plus infinity that is not acceptable as far as differentiability is concerned this is very important okay so f of x minus f of c upon x minus c you consider this as a function find out its limit as x tends to c if it exists and find out so we need limit to be l and limit plus infinity or minus infinity is not acceptable then and then only we will call that function differentiable and then the value at that time will be denoted by f dash of c i mean whatever this value is going to be there limit x tends to c as f of x minus f of c upon x minus c eventually will be said that it is the value of the derivative of that function at c so denoted by f dash of c okay so this is very important limit so limit definition is the fundamental thing in the differential calculus everything else is built on that definition samajhte hai sagayna so now let us take example so this is y2 minus y1 y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 this is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 which in two dimensional geometry we said slope if x and c are distinct then it is slope of secant but if we take limiting case as x tends to c then limiting secant is a tangent therefore this value f dash of c geometrically is slope of tangent at x is equal to c that is the geometric interpretation of differential function at c, or a derivative of the function at c samajhte hain okay so let us see the example suppose i give you the simplest and most friendly function f of x example let f of x is equal to x raised to 4 for example find 
f dash at two. Suppose this is the question. Now in physics you are aware of how to find out derivative of this, but now we are going to do it. Maybe because this is the first problem, I will show you how to do it. Okay, so we will do as per the definition of differentiability, we will write limit as x tends to two f of x that is x raised to four minus two raised to four upon x minus two. This is what we got. Correct. And we said that limit of this is exactly same as x minus two into x raised to three plus x raised to two x raised to two plus four x raised to one plus eight divided by x minus two limit x tends to two. So now you can cancel them out. That will eliminate your indeterminate ne zero point zero. And therefore, this is a straightforward polynomial function, and hence limit will be using the algebra of limit. Limit of x cube as x tends to two is eight. Limit of two x square as x tends to two is eight. Limit of four x as x tends to two is eight plus eight, which is four times eight, which is actual math. Thirty-two. So, a good slope of a f of x is equal to x fourth. X fourth is going to be very steep like this. Slope at x is equal to two. Suppose you find out the slope at x is equal to two. Tangent. Tangent will have slope thirty-two. That is the meaning of that. Okay. So now you have to write down the proof. So I, this is finding derivative from first principle. Proof that f f dash at c of f of x is equal to x raised to n is n c raised to n minus one. Write down proof of this, where n is natural. Okay, I will you go about it exactly same way. Limit x tends to c x raised to n minus c raised to n upon x minus c x minus limit x tends to c x minus c common inside bracket x raised to n minus one plus x raised to n minus two c plus dot 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 plus x raised to x c raised to n minus two plus c raised to n plus n minus one. The whole divided by x minus c. This is equal to limit as x tends to c. This big bracket, which is equal to c raised to n minus one plus c raised to n minus one plus plus c raised to n minus one total n times. Which makes it n c raised to n minus one. Very good. Next, find derivative. Now let me write down the definition before this. Let f be defined by two r. 
we say that f is differentiable on i if and only if f is differentiable on differentiable at each c belonging to i so function is differentiable over interval if it is differentiable at every point in that interval okay so we say that f is differentiable on i if it is differentiable at each point on that i adala blur kadala ah okay so if this definition is true then derivative of f of x can be written as is a dash of x and is a new function derivative is a new function defined from i to r okay using definition of differentiability find derivative of y is equal to sin x on board limit x tends to c sin x minus sin c upon x minus c yes tell me what effect what do we do now x minus x tends to c sin minus sin so we write sin, sin x minus sin c x plus c by 2 uh, sorry x, x minus 2 cos 2 cos x plus c by 2 is that right divided by x minus c we can take this two in the denominator which will make it limit x tends to c sin x minus c by 2 once x minus c by 2 into limit x tends to c cos x plus c by 2 this limit is 1 into 2c by 2 is c cos of c therefore the answer is so f dash okay so this is f dash at c is equal to cos okay good similarly we will be able to do it for derivative of cos limit cos x minus cos c upon x minus c x tends to c will we be able to do cos minus cos is 2 minus 2 sin x plus c by 2 sin x minus c by 2 upon x minus c 
limit x tends to c this is equal to again this 2 will go down so limit x minus c by 2 or sorry sin x minus c by 2 upon x minus c by 2 as x tends to c into limit plus sin x plus c by 2 correct this is 1 into 1 into sin c so derivative of cos c is minus sin c okay so these are the basic now we will not do all trigonometry ratio but before that we would like to learn the algebra of derivatives let me ask you a few questions before that find the derivative or let f be defined from say minus 2 to 2 to r let f of x is equal to radical 4 minus x square find a dash of x over minus 2 to 4. एकदम असं देण्यापेक्षा मी आधी तर असं सोपं देऊ का जाऊ देत का वाईल डीलिंग विथ दिस प्रॉब्लेम इट इज बेसिकली इव्हॅल्युएशन ऑफ लिमिट अँड द ट्रिक्स दॅट वी नीड टू डेव्हलप फॉर इव्हॅल्युएशन ऑफ लिमिट इज टू गेट रीड ऑफ इनडिटर्मिनंटनेस ऑफ दॅट फंक्शन सो either by factorizing if you can cancel the bad factor and get rid of indeterminateness that is one story second maybe in this case it is going to be something like rationalization so let us write down limit as x tends to c radical 4 minus x square minus radical 4 minus c square divided by x minus c that is what is our definition of a dash of x at c a dash at c is equal to which is equal to now x minus c makes it zero and this also is going to be zero if we substitute x is equal to c Therefore, the trick here is to rationalize, multiply numerator and denominator by rationalizing factor of this numerator that makes it, makes it difference of two squares. Therefore, 4 minus x square minus 4 plus c square after multiplying. And in the denominator, you will have x minus c as it is and radical 4 minus x square plus radical 4 minus c square now this plusness is not making it zero okay when it was minus in between this was making it zero so now you will be able to cancel that factor after algebraic simplification uh, 4 4 gets cancelled minus 1 times x minus c into x plus c divided by x minus c into root of 4 minus x square plus root of 4 minus c square right and therefore this factor is gone and now you can substitute so when you substitute why is it becoming 2 when it is c
when you substitute you get 2c with negative sign uh, right in the numerator and you get 2 times radical 4 minus c square in the denominator therefore 2 2 gets cancelled and if we replace c by x so f dash of x is equal to f dash of x is equal to that is where you commit mistake x upon radical 4 minus x square now you will observe that deliberately i have given you this closed brackets what is this curve this curve is a semicircle above x axis okay that is why it is a function if it is a complete circle then it is not a function and now at plus 2 or minus 2 if you try to draw tangent to the circle then what will be the slope of the tangent the slope is undefined that is why limit does not exist at this point i mean limit exists it will be plus infinity or minus infinity but that is not acceptable as far as definition of derivative is concerned. It has to be, limit has to exist and must be finite. That is why this minus 2 and 2 fail to have differential. And algebraically, this is geometric interpretation. Algebraically also, f dash of x is equal to minus x upon radical 4 minus x square. That is what is the formula that we have got. If x is equal to 2 or opposite of 2, then we will be still in trouble. And therefore, f dash of x is not defined at that point. And hence, we need to exclude those ones. Hello? Yes? Yes? Hmm. Yes, can you can you call me after 12:30? I am in a lecture right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha! Huh. Someone like so. This alertness is important. So we will we will say function is not differentiable at two and minus two because the tangent tangent exists but it is vertical. There will be few cases where tangent will not exist. There also we will say function is not differentiable. That is why this is important. It is alertness is important. Tangent exists, but it is vertical. Therefore, derivative does not exist. Will derivative exist on all points between minus 2 to 2? Yes. Because slope is not going to be undefined. Okay. So now, suppose now I will just demonstrate you geometry of these derivatives. Suppose I have a function which is say like this. Okay. Visually, suppose I want to sketch the derivative of this. I know tangent at this point has a positive slope, little less positive, less positive, less positive, less positive. Maybe at this point the slope of tangent is zero. So the value of the tangent. So this is f of x and if I want to plot f dash of x then from left side it was a positive slope but at this point it became zero and after that it becomes a further negative slope. Therefore this derivative of this function could be like this. Slope is negative. And if it continues to become negative and if it is say constant straight line then whatever is that slope maybe one or two this line will become urgent constant okay so we need to have this geometric interpretation in mind as far as 
derivative is concerned. So now what I will request you is try to sketch f of x is equal to sin x. Okay, maybe couple of cycles. Below that, f dash of x. Below that, f double dash of x. I mean, differentiate this also one more time and you will get the function. And then write down those functions as well as try to sketch the geometry of those functions by looking at the graph above it. That is a very important skill that you need to develop because it is not necessary that every time you will be given functions, some proper functions and ask questions. Many a time it is given that you consider function f of x which is increasing in this interval and decreasing in this interval, then what will happen to the derivative, etc. So in that, in that particular problem, if we could make some correct sketches, we will be able to solve that problem very quickly. So as a practice, I want you to sketch sin x properly. Look at every point and exactly below those points, you should sketch the derivative of sin x and below that, the second derivative of sin x. Okay, so it is important to draw these sketches to scale. Maybe one cycle, but it has to be absolutely correct. Sin. This is pi by 2. Pi. 0. Minus pi by 2. Minus pi. Right? And if you observe the slope of tangent at 0, slope of tangent at 0, it is 1. Tangent, I mean the curve is to the both sides of the tangent. If you look at using microscope, suppose this is zero, sine escapes like this and it goes like this to the other side. But the fun is here it is tangent. It is actually intersecting, it is changing the half plane, but still it is tangent at zero. And that is why if you sketch it correctly, then you will get this 45 degree line at zero. Otherwise, your tangent will be having slope two, three, four, and you will say, no, 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 this is correct. It should be equal to, because cos of zero, cos of zero is one. So if you really sketch one here, the derivative function at pi by two is going to be zero. And it is going to be like this. And it is going to be like this. Here. This is looking like cos. This is sine. Okay. And at zero, if you find out slope of tangent f of cos x, that is f dash of x, it is zero. So the third function that you are going to draw, derivative of cos x, we have said minus sin x. So everything, whatever is here in this graph will be flipped like this. Something like this. I don't have control in this pen and tablet. Therefore, but then you understand. Now the slope here is minus one. Something like and this cycle will continue. If you draw fourth one, so this is minus sign fourth one will be minus cos and then again it will be back to sin x. Okay, so that is what is important. Okay, like that you should practice for different functions so that you have, I mean that, that is where it makes sense. When is it intersecting x axis? The dash function intersects x axis, that means there is a horizontal tangent to the original function. Something like that. Okay, we will make use of these facts 
extensively down the line but presently this is just the introduction so now let us complete the job of writing definitions and a few more definitions which we are supposed to write are say for example again in the limit only now our limit definition is limit as x tends to c f of x is equal to l we did it for limit as x tends to c f of x is equal to plus infinity we also did it for limit x tends to c f of x is equal to minus infinity now what then the graph could be i mean the function could be like this say for example uh as you go say okay i we can we can find out a function like this as you go towards positive infinity side on x axis x is going to positive infinity and then function is becoming asymptotic either to zero or maybe the function is like this some value it is becoming it is approaching somewhere or maybe tan inverse you have sketched where it was like this and it was becoming asymptotic at this point tan inverse right so as as it extends to infinity then where is the question of cluster point where should we take c we don't know so but then will the limit exist i mean yes as x tends to c as as x tends to infinity plus infinity in this case this function f of x is tending to zero in case of tan inverse as x tends to plus infinity tan inverse of x is tending to pi by 2 this is the value of the function so limit is there maybe here the limit is finite and x is tending to plus infinity so this is one kind of graphs i have drawn of course x can tend to exponential if we take 2 raised to x what happens as x tends to minus infinity 2 raised to x tends to zero okay so if we can take x and another kind of curves could be such that where say for example uh y is equal to x square as x tends to infinity f of x tends to plus infinity as x tends to minus infinity f of x tends to plus infinity something many combinations i mean x is also tending to infinity f of x is also tending to infinity and there will be four combinations like this okay so there are those are the definitions say for example let me write down which definitions which we want to create one limit x tends to plus infinity f of x is equal to it. second limit x tends to minus infinity f of x is equal to h where l is a finite number the limit x tends to plus infinity f of x is equal to plus infinity or minus infinity i'll finish it in this for limit x tends to minus infinity i mean you have to write down two different definitions let me call this as four this is five as limit x tends to minus infinity f of x tends to plus infinity and 6 minus infinity okay and already we have written maybe uh, 0 0 0 okay and those three we have already written so this 6 it are like a these are finite numbers 2 then 4 and 4 बरोबर झाले 8 आणि ओरिजिनल एक नो सो टोटल नाइन डेफिनेशन Okay, out of which three we have written, 
one we had written couple of lectures before remaining two we have written in the beginning today so let us try to figure it out how should we write this definitions vichar kara apan le untam vel thoda deto tumhala see when you have l here the first and second definition if you have l in rhs that means epsilon will work so whenever you have l here in rhs finite number you have to consider epsilon now the new thing that we have got here is x is tending to plus infinity and therefore we cannot have c cluster point so we have to do similar mechanism the way we have done it for l tending to infinity i mean instead of l we had plus infinity we have done some mechanism at that time similar mechanism need to be done at x as x tends to plus infinity okay what do we mean by x tending to plus infinity you give me the value of x i will give you the value of x bigger than that that is the meaning of x tending to infinity so when there is l you, you will have epsilon in your definition when there is infinity plus infinity or minus infinity like that then you will have that capital m instead of epsilon capital m in your definition something like this so we have to create what do we have in our definition if x is tending to plus infinity so let me write down now the definition of first and then you can complete the definitions of remaining all what we say that now prerequisite for all the definitions is same maybe i will write it only uh it is not going to be the same it will depend on what definition it is let f be defined from what should be the prerequisite a b subset of r okay now a subset should be such that it should allow us to go to plus infinity so let a b not bounded above now we don't understand what what do we mean by this but presently you just write it maybe next lecture we will discuss what do we mean by that let a be not bounded above means i can take whatever value of x that i want on the right hand side so i will be able to take x to plus infinity right so that is why this x is not bounded above let f be defined from a to r let l belong to r we say that limit f of x as x tends to infinity plus infinity is equal to l if and on the if okay now this is l here therefore for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists x dash greater than 0 such that suppose i give you some value of x as x dash okay such that for every x greater than x dash or for every x belonging to x dash comma plus infinity we have same now if l is there then our absolute value is same f of x 
minus L is less than epsilon. Right? What was the diagram? Our diagram was this as x tends to infinity. So our value of the function is going to tend to zero. So L is zero, right? L is going to be zero eventually. So if L is zero, you give me epsilon. I will tell you the value of x dash beyond which, if you take any x, you will stay within L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. Minus epsilon doesn't make sense. So you will stay between L that is zero to epsilon. You give me x dash. Uh, you give me epsilon, I give you x dash. Calculations are going to be like that. You give me epsilon, I give you x dash. Have you understood? So that is what is the complete correct definition of limit f of x as x tends to infinity L. And the prerequisite change in prerequisite is that A should be the set such that we should be able to take higher values and there is no problem. So it should not be bounded above. Bounded above means it is, suppose five, five comma seven closed or open is bounded above. You cannot take value of x is equal to eight. But if five comma plus infinity not bounded above, then I can take value of x is equal to eight. Is the meaning of this? We will pro properly define and understand the meaning. But presently you write it like that. So this is what is the definition. So now we have answer if L is infinity or minus infinity. Now we have answer if X is tending to constant C or plus infinity or minus infinity. Therefore, I request you to complete all the remaining definitions with prerequisite neatly written. Okay, and every time whatever values you take here, either epsilon or capital M, it should be positive or whatever value you take here as x dash or C, it should be positive. You ensure that this convention is followed and then you finish it. So maybe I will look at what you are writing here eventually and which values of x are acceptable. So complete all the remaining five definitions neatly written. So every time you write the definition, you understand it better. Okay. Let me write down the second definition, the prerequisite here, the change will be bounded below. Everything else will remain same. Now for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists x dash, x dash greater than zero such that for every x belonging to minus infinity to minus x dash. Uh, we have okay this is our first and second what is our third definition plus infinity to plus infinity okay third let a belong a b subset of r let a b not bounded above let f be function from a to r now l is not there we say that let and the one let m be m belong to oh, i think we are limit x tends to plus infinity f of x is equal to plus infinity if and only if for every m greater than zero there exists x dash greater than zero such that for every x belonging to 
x dash comma plus infinity we have f of x greater than m okay so we have captured now everything we wanted to go to plus infinity therefore f of x is greater than m we wanted to go to plus infinity as far as x is concerned so you give me x dash i i take x beyond x dash so this is third and i think fourth will be similar to third except what will be the change f of x is less than minus this is third and fourth fourth will have only this change x is tending to plus infinity f of x is less than minus capital m that is the change in fourth now fifth is x is tending to minus infinity and value of the function is tending to sir yes sir in the second one uh, 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 instead of uh, such that for all x belonging to minus infinity to minus x dash if we write uh, for all x belonging to x x dash to plus infinity and instead of f of x minus uh, l uh, we write f of Minus x minus l. Uh, like it's more less. No, there will be many possibilities of changing signs here and there. But if we are keeping it positive, x dash positive, and basically what you want to say graphically is as you go to minus infinity side. That is what is the meaning of this, na? You want to go towards minus infinity. so you should select x any value of x from minus infinity to whatever value x dash opposite of x dash you decide so physically this is correct geometrically this is correct unnecessarily if we write minus f minus l then it is going to be very difficult for us to understand therefore we keep it very simple this is very simple because anyway you want to go to minus infinity so you start from minus infinity and stop at minus x dash you can have value of x anywhere in between so this is minus infinity towards this side this is minus x dash you can take any value of x every time you take any value of x you will be less than this value epsilon if it is epsilon okay so i mean see because we are dealing with inequality we can always take negation of that and make it opposite make it less than so make it greater than but then it will be confusion it will be difficult to remember okay so let me write down the definition as x tends to minus infinity uh limit tends to plus infinity okay so let a b subset of r let a b not bounded below let f be from a to r we say that limit x tends to minus infinity f of x is equal to plus infinity if and only if for every m greater than 0 there exists x dash greater than 0 such that for every x belonging to minus infinity to minus x dash we have this is plus infinity so I, i you give me a number i give you a number bigger than that f of x is greater than m that is for you and if you want to write 6 what you should do is f of x is less than minus m everything else it's 
so practically we have finished writing all definitions of limit now you should learn these definitions in such a way that any definition required any time should be available precisely without any error 